it's not me, it's you What you're turning into Is some kind of something that I never knew It used to be okay and I like you that way But I don't think that I like you better No, I don't think that I like you better Hey everybody, so right now I'm working on some uh, work for my rigging class. Um, it's related to my thesis, of course, in the sense that I'm uh, rigging Creed, the main character for, for my thesis. Um, and although I'm not majoring in rigging, this is this is good stuff for me to know as a modeler, and this demonstration will kind of kind of show you why. I'm actually going to be doing a bit of my homework here, so you can actually see me doing this work I shouldn't say for the first time. I mean, specifically what I'm going to do is going to be for the first time, but I found a bunch of corrections I needed to do as I started doing this, um, and so now I'm finally getting to the heart of, um, of what I wanted to accomplish. You'll, you'll see what I mean. Um, so I'm working right now with something called corrective blend shapes. Now in, uh, in Maya, when you rig, often you'll have problems where things don't deform exactly as you want, even though you have... Um, even though the bones and stuff are working as they should with the skin. And then so you need to do some, some extras. For instance, one thing here, these uh, these spheres. Didn't select it, but there we go. Like that sphere there, uh, and that one there, those are influencing the arms as biceps. So if I go in, make that part invisible, and I select this here, I have it set to where when I bend the arm here the the muscle contracts and the skin kind of the skin pulls out um, somewhat realistically so that's one way to do it um, another way are it's these little balls here that's uh, what is that called create deformer that's a, called a sculpted deformer and uh, those are actually very easy to, to set up. You can set them on joints that, that need to maintain their volume when, a, joint, when a, a limb bends. And so that's there, and it's, it keeps uh, volume on the elbow. I also have a couple, one on each knee, and obviously one on that elbow, too. What I'm going to do now, though, is I'm going to go ahead and create another um, corrective blend shape. And I will probably pause this at, at points so that it doesn't get too tedious. But the first thing I need to do is, so I've selected this uh, shoulder joint to bend. Now normally I would actually select part of the rig uh, or, or a controller, but I don't have the controllers for this setup yet. Uh, they will be set up eventually. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and rotate it on on, on why this is some of this is probably driving you crazy if you're a rigger because um, there are things I should have hidden here and I've got just all these crazy things but there are things that I'll, I'll be cleaning up later so let's see I think it's on Y that I rotate it and if I do negative 33 there we go it bends down um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this handy script called Hyperreal Corrective Shape, which is by a man named Eric Miller, who is also Academy of, an Academy of Art University graduate. This is a really, really great uh, script. It makes this process very easy. So what I will do is I've selected my character, and I, I bent the arm down, and I'm going to say Clean Duplicate. And that makes it says now Bodacious Creed 1 up here, so that makes a duplicate of <clears throat> that character. So I'm going to say left uh, shoulder down underscore BS for blend shape. Now I'm going to export this and bring it into ZBrush. I'll be right back. Okay, so here I am in ZBrush, and we have the left shoulder down. You can see the right arm is in the, the pose I wanted it in. That's, um, you know, there are different ways to create a character. I like having the arm down this way rather than in T pose or definitely not straight down. So it's just uh, kind of a matter of preference, but kind of a matter of how you want the topology to go as well. But that's that's for another day. Um, so here, 
See, I've got the arm. Now I already have ZBrush, uh, some settings done to, to fix this um, with my tools. And I may not need to pause here. I can just probably do this pretty quick. And ZBrush is fun to watch anyway. So I'm fixing, the, so I'm gonna fix this. And let's see, I think I'll bring this in. Uh, move, move brush. Bring this in a little bit. Um, definitely out for the scapula. And. Ah. So fun when they turn around like this. And this, like this. Pectoral actually, muscle actually goes, uh, let's see. Yeah, folds in that way, so that was better. Alright, and so, whoops. So I've got some improvement there. I'm going to smooth this out just slightly. Go back to standard brush, bring it up a little bit. See how it looks from the front. Looks like it's too high now. Just move it down a little bit. Okay. I don't need to, you know, I want to do well in this class, but I don't need to get super detailed. And I'm having so much trial and error with my work that, um, you know, at this point I feel like I just want to get some things done. Uh, I might want to bring out the deltoid slightly, though. The delts. There we go. That looks good. I think. Anyway. Uh, so then I'm going to pop this back over to Maya. I, mean, I have it set up right now. It'll it'll replace the... Oh, it should have replaced the previous one, but it didn't. Uh, that's okay. I'm actually kind of surprised it didn't, So, but that's okay. So what I'm going to do is move this over here. Here's the corrected one, as you can see, and here's the actual model. Now... Okay, so now I just have the blend shape selected, the old one. I'm going to delete it. Select this, and then I select the action. Select the blend shape. Select the actual model, and say apply shape. I said this is a very nice script. It makes it so much easier than it would be otherwise. Um, and that looks great. Uh, the only problem is. Uh, let's see. I think I put this at make negative 33. Yep. So it's at negative 33. If I put it back to zero, which I, I want to remember that negative 33. Uh, as you can see now, it looks all stretched out and funny there. That's not how it's supposed to look. So I go back to this one. This hyperblend node um, on the shoulder down is uh, what does the morph on this model, so it's kind of the influence it's pushing out. And so you can see if I... Now, now it looks fine. So at this point, when the arm is just at zero, we want it to have no influence from this. When it's at 30, negative 33, we want it to have uh, one influence, and for it to be a smooth transition in between. Fortunately, Maya has I'm going to go ahead and close the script because that's all that, that's how I've been using it. Maya has this fantastic thing where you choose. So I'm choosing the joint, going up to set driven key. This is what is going to be driven. No, wait. This is going to be the driver. Okay, load driver. So when this bends, it affects how much the, the morph. Uh, goes so and I load the driver right now we have them both set to zero so I'm just gonna say oh and I, this is needs this needs to be rotate Y if this is boring to you uh, just zone out while I do this <laughs> and then you'll you'll see the result and it'll look cool so I, I will key that basically that means that the rotate up and down on this is linked to this and when this is at zero this is at zero now I want to go back to this one and when it's at rotate wise at minus 33 I need to have the hyperblend at one 
since I already have the association set up in here, I just have to say key. Set driven key is really cool. I, yeah, it was a little bit confusing to me when I first started using it, but after I've used it a bunch, um, and I've had to do, you know, rigging for this, for, so for this class and for actually two other classes I've had to do rigging for, including the head class that you saw last semester and my very first Maya class, um, it's, yeah, I, I don't know. In my opinion, this has got to be like a rigger's best friend. So let's go to, back to this, you can see the full model. And now when I rotate the arm, oh, don't run rotate that, that far. <laughs> then we have the problem again. Rotate the arm. Okay, from 0 to 33. The bend looks pretty darn good. Definitely much better than how, how broken it was. So that's what it does. So and you just actually saw me do some of my assignment. I'm going to do the rest of this. I'm, oh, I'm going to hide this guy because he doesn't need to be visible. He just needs to exist. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the other side and, and see what else I need to fix. Some, I think I already showed the chest, right? No, I did. And the knees, show those two. Here's another blend thing I did when raising the foot. Now I showed that I used um, a NURBS sphere as a bicep muscle. Um, and I've got these in here to keep the knees full, but um, here I decided instead of putting in muscles to uh, to do uh, the blend thing as well. And that's working pretty well. So you can see how the, how the leg is coming up in here. And if I hide the shorts one issue here was that the the glued